Hello and welcome to another circuit design video. In this video I am going to show you my uh, new self-designed audio amplifier. I have built it up here on this breadboard and uh, I have completely self-designed this and self-built this audio amplifier. It is a really special audio amplifier because it has no takeover distortions or nearly no takeover distortion and uh, it has no quiescent current. So this is a really special audio amplifier. It's based on a differential amplifier. I'm showing it to you uh, in the schematic later. And this video is going to be uh, in two parts. In the first part, which is this, uh, I'm showing you the amplifier circuit itself. And in the second part, I'm showing you a bridged version of this amplifier. So with the bridged version, you have more power um, and it is much louder than this version. So if you want to see the bridge, bridge version, also watch the second part of this video. At first I am showing you the schematic. Ok, here I am showing you the schematic. This is the schematic of the whole circuit. But for better understanding, I am showing you first a more basic circuit which is doing the same like this. This is the first version of um, this circuit that I have built. And uh, it uses a normal operational amplifier. Uh, which is solving the following problem. Uh, these two transistors are taking about 0.7 volts uh, in this because we have a diode in here so it's take, it is taking 0.7 volts. So the problem is uh, that we have takeover distortion. So the voltage must be higher than 0.7 volts that the transistor are going to switch on. So to solve this problem I'm using this operational amplifier here. The operational amplifier uh, is going or, or want to have um, zero volts across these uh, two connections and it is reaching it by um, driving the output a high or low. So if I am putting in a signal here and uh, the output uh, of, of the operational amplifier go, goes high then it must go uh, 0.7 volts higher then the output at the end here because we are losing 0.7 volts here so that we are getting the right output voltage here uh, the operational amplifier must put the voltage 0.7 volts higher at this point um, that this is compensated so with this circuit I am compensating uh, the takeover distortion and I also have no quiescent current because if I am connecting no voltage here then uh, no output is here and no current is flowing down here. So I have no quiescent current which is really good. Um, I'm showing you um, a waveform diagram right here. This is the waveform diagram of two points. This green line is this point here and uh, the red line is this point here. So the operational amplifier uh, is putting 0.7 volts or about 0.7 volts a bit more uh, the voltage up here that at this point I have no uh, takeover distortion. I'm showing it to you later on the oscilloscope um, yes so and now I'm showing you my complete circuit this is the complete circuit completely uh, built with this great components no integrated components like an operational amplifier Let's start here with the first part of uh, my circuit. This is the first part here. This part is just a little amplifier which is amplifying um, the signal. If the source is a really weak source, um, then you, you need this amplifier. Um, you can adjust uh, the volume if you are putting a potentiometer right here. Um, from this point against ground and uh, to uh, this input point. So then you can adjust the volume. If you build this circuit, uh, this pre-amplifier, then it is really important that you connect the potentiometer because uh, the amplification of this is really high and so uh, your waveform gets clipped. So you need uh, to put the potentiometer in here if you're building this circuit. You also can make the amplification of this lower if you are um, putting a resistor into here for example with 200 ohms then you have a lower amplification so you also can do that. 
Okay, that's for the preamplifier. Here at the next we have uh, these two resistors. These two resistors must have the same value. Um, this is uh, for making an offset. Here I have my operation voltage, for example 12 volts. And so I have here um, 6 volts. And uh, because I have no, no plus minus voltage, I have just a plus ground supply. So I need uh, to put my signal in the middle first of this supply voltage. And then comes the differential amplifier, my this great uh, operational amplifier, so, so I can say. Um, and first, down here, I have a constant current source, because I have uh, connected two diodes in series here, so I get a voltage drop for, of about um, 1.4 volts here. I also can use a Sina diode or an LED to get this voltage drop here. And, um, because of this voltage drop, 1.4 volts, I got um, 0.7 volts across these resistors because um, this diode uh, also has a voltage drop of about 0.7 volt. So the current that is uh, flowing down here and here is controlled uh, by this resistor. So you can say uh, that the current I equals voltage across this resistor divided by this resistor. Okay, a constant current is flowing down here and here. So these two transistors are acting like a differential amp amplifier. So this is my uh, non-inverting input and this is my inverting input of this di differential amplifier. And this is my output. So the output of my differential amplifier is driving this uh, push-pull stage here and the input is uh, recoupled, recoupled the output of my push-pull stage. So this is also acting absolutely the same like uh, this circuit and it is also compensating um, the takeover distortions. So you can see it here the same. It is doing absolutely the same like you can see it in this diagram. So this voltage here, the red one, is here and uh, the green one is um, here at this point. So this is the red and this is the green one. Okay, so this is um, the, the basic construction of my circuit. I've, I'm using two transistors in the Dalek configuration because um, that the current that is putting from this point and from this point is lower, so um, I need this second transistor for that. Then I'm decoupling my signal here with this uh, capacitor so that I illuminating the DC offset from my 6 volts so with this capacitor and then my uh, loudspeaker is connected here. Okay, that's for the circuit and now I'm showing you the circuit on the oscilloscope. So I've connected my oscilloscope to the output of my circuit. This second circuit you can see here, it does not matter for uh, this video now. This is just for the bridged version, for the second version. And uh, for the first version, uh, now I have connected my oscilloscope completely to the output. Um, here you can see these are the power transistors, maybe you can see it. Uh, here I have the differential amplifier and here the preamplifier. Um, at the input I have connected a signal generator which is a switch to sine wave with 1 kilohertz. Um, so okay, now let's look to the scope. Um, and uh, now I'm connecting um, this resistor here uh, to uh, my circuit against the loudspeaker because uh, this resistor has 3.3 uh, ohms uh, exactly or nearly exactly like the loudspeaker. The loudspeaker has 4 ohms and um, I don't want to hear these uh, squeaking sounds from the function generator uh, while I'm talking so I'm connecting this uh, resistor just as a load that we have the same conditions like the loudspeaker is connected. So now we are looking to the oscilloscope. I've connected um, the output of my amplifier to the first channel of my oscilloscope and I've switched to the first channel. I've uh, switched it to 1 volt per division. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm using my Tektronix 2230, now in analog mode here. Okay, 
Um, now I'm switching on the power supply and now I'm switching on the function generator. And here we have it. This there. Uh, now the load is connected and if we zoom in we can see a little little bit of takeover distortion here but really good compensated. It is really good compensated. If you're looking at it uh, like so you can see it maybe a bit but I zoom in a bit with the camera that you can see it maybe uh, better. So now you can see it a little bit but really really weak. It is really weak. Okay. Uh, now I disconnect the load. You can see the uh, takeover distribution has completely disappeared and the signal is a bit bad bigger but just really a little bit so it's this that, that, that doesn't matter okay now I'm connecting my differential amplifier so that it is acting uh, like a normal amplifier not uh, compensating the takeover distribution so one moment so okay now it is not compensating the compensating the takeover distribution and here you can see the big takeover distribution here this is uh, the point where it needs, uh, where the signal needs to reach 0.7 volts, and then the transistor is starting switching uh, through. So this is the point uh, that I'm compensating with my circuit. Okay, now I'm connecting it back uh, to the compensated version. So here you can see uh, how it looks like compensated. Uh, and now I connect the second channel of my oscilloscope to the point where uh, the output of my differential amplifier is and uh, where the uh, push-pull stage is connected to my differential amplifier. Okay, here you can see it. And you can see it now really good, the same that uh, I've shown you on the computer in the simulation. Uh, you can see this is my output and this is the point where the differential amplifier is putting 0.7 volts more out so that it is compensating the takeover distribution on the output. Um, I'm putting it exactly here and you can see uh, 1.5 volts, about 1.5 or 1.4 uh, volts so it ex is exactly um, 0.7 volts from uh, this point to this point. Okay. Now I disconnect the load and you can see it, it doesn't need to compensate it because now it has no load and uh, the transistor has no dropout voltage. With load, without load. With load, without load. Okay. That's for the scope and now I'm showing you with my multimeter how many quiescent current this circuit takes. So here I've connected my multimeter uh, at the point of the circuit just uh, at the push-pull uh, stage point. Not the whole circuit, just the push-pull stage so that you can see the quiescent current from the push-pull stage. And now if I switch on the function generator, now you can see it is taking current 126 milliamps. And if I switch off the function generator, there is no quiescent current like 20 milliamps or so. I just have 0.13 or 0.14 milliamps. So this, these are 130 microamps. So I have a really low quiescent current, which is really good. So here I'm, I have switched on my function generator. And if it is off, I have nearly no quiescent current. Okay, now I'm connecting uh, the loudspeaker to the circuit. And as you can hear, it is uh, possible to drive a loudspeaker with this circuit. Okay, that's it for the first part of this video. And uh, in the second part, I'm showing you the bridged version, which is much louder and um, has much more power. Uh, 
is this circuit. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.